and we'll drop back here. Good evening, 585ers. This is your instructor, Steve Swan. We are going to take a step back before we launch into uh, module three. And the only reason why we're going to take a step back is I want you to see the foundations upon which we're going to do module three. We're probably going to take about the next three classes to do module three because I want to make sure that you have it in your head. Now, those of you who might be sitting out there in a classroom somewhere um, doing this, we probably need you to check tonight as a part of what we're doing to make sure that you can reach uh, a Google Classroom site from inside a school district. Um, if you can, great, no problems. If you're having problems with it, um, in other words, if your school district is within a Google domain already and you're not allowed to share information about your Google Classroom, it's not a problem. I will do a debrief on our last uh, of these uh, classes to show you how you can actually record what you're doing in your Google Classroom and then you can post that link into the Blackboard assignment. Everyone else is basically going to post the link to their Google Classroom along with the classroom code so I can see it. But let me show you where we're starting from. What is the foundation here? <clears throat> if you remember back when we were reading Fullen, one of the things that he talked about a lot is this idea of technology integration into classrooms. And you've got to remember that when Fullen was writing all this, although his, his book is fairly current, it wasn't current enough that it did not uh, come at a time when we are looking at this uh, enormous convergence of ideas around technology integration, i.e. we have the Google Classroom now. And everyone acts like this is such a big new deal. It's not a big new deal. It's just the latest new deal. Uh, I can remember very clearly teaching teachers uh, how to become Microsoft Office user um, users. And before that, how to help people become uh, competent users of Claris Works, Apple Works. So there's nothing new there except this is the first time we've really seen a total uh, coming together of apps, a virtual space, and teacher control of that virtual space. In schools that have adopted the Google Classroom, the use of the classroom space is dictated by the way the district Google administrator has it all set up. And we'll, we'll make mention of that. But let's go back to Mayer. So he says on tech integration, the integration of technology and pedagogy to maximize learning must meet four criteria. It must be irresistibly engaging, elegantly efficient, challenging but easy to use, technologically ubiquitous, and steeped in real life problem solving. That's what we're going to do for the next two modules, is we're going to address both of these ideas. And I think one of the things that we need to realize is that mastering the Google Classroom is just a first step out. Then understanding how all of these various tools now that are available to us as teachers can then be utilized within the Google Classroom. The Google Classroom is nothing more than a shell. Um, what you're looking at on your screen right now is a shell within Blackboard. And then the owner of the shell, me, then puts all this material in here that you see. And part of what we have to understand is how we go about building that. And so as you can see here, where I've got the beginnings of the ubiquitous classroom, front and center is the Google Classroom. And if we read down through here, 
we'll see that a summary of the Google Classroom is it connects instructors with students, makes it easy to create a class and invite learners, helps instructors to distribute assignments. Now, this is where we start getting into the nuts and bolts. Facilitates communication between instructors and students and allows teachers to create, review, and mark assignments and allows students to see assignments on assignments, documents, and class materials in one place. And it's fairly simple to use. We're going to break it down into three pieces. We're going to do that. And this is how I have been teaching the Google training here at, at the university for people who want to become Google teacher certified. And so I've taken that idea of the Google certification and I've broken it down into three sections. And what I do here is we meet on three separate days. Usually it's a Friday because most people have Fridays available. And then we teach these different sections as to what it is that we're, that the test will focus around. So tonight we're going to be looking at these things that you see here under level one, section one. So we're going to be looking at tech integration, apps, drive, documents, sheets, forms, um, and the classroom. And then next week we'll take a look at, um, we're going to look a lot at calendar because that's one of the things that the good folks at uh, Google uh, think are, are really important. And then we'll take a look at Gmail and we'll take a look at Hangout, both text and video. The other things that are here, like contacts and groups and tasks and keep, we're not going to look too much at uh, groups and contacts except to give them sort of a passing wave. Um, most of the contacts definitely are done for you if your school is a Google school. In other words, you have a Google administrator who manages the Gmail accounts and then Gmail accounts are then used to create the contacts that are the students who are in your classroom. But you can also create groups within that. And then finally, we'll take a look at um, sites, YouTube, Google Plus we don't look at because frankly, it's not on the test anymore. Digital citizenship, um, YouTube is interesting. You wouldn't think of YouTube being a part of this, but it has rapidly become a very integral part of classroom, as you'll see when we get down here and play with it. I have some information for you here. If you are the kind of person who likes to read on your own, and uh, we will take you through what it takes to become a Google certified teacher if you want to give that a try. Down here is a interesting, and we'll come back to this when we do the next, um, when we actually go to module four. But these are all of the apps that are out there now that have a direct connection to the Google Classroom. So you literally can create within these apps and then have that creation, whatever you've created, be connected directly back to your Google Classroom. So everything can exist within the classroom. Um, you just send kids out to do various tasks or to look for information using all of these um, different applications that are out there. Some are even uh, can be put into uh, your Chrome if you use Chrome so that it becomes even more and more uh, simple for you to understand it. So how are we going to start? Well, tonight we're going to look at a couple of things and I'm going to look at it through the lens of how the Google test has you do it. And it's going to be very simple, not going to be very complex at all. But this isn't a training. When I do the trainings, we get a lot more, you know, into the weeds and, and trying to understand what we're doing. I just want you to see the possibilities here. So what I want you to do is open a new tab up here at the top. I'm making some assumptions here. Let me back up for a second. I'm making some assumptions here. Assumption number one that I'm making is, is that you have a Gmail account. 
if you do not have a Gmail account, you need to create one. And creating a Gmail account, and there's mine, is as simple as going to Gmail and let me get out of here. Going here and as you can see, I've just signed out. My sink, sinking is paused. I hope I haven't done something here I'll regret. But you're going to go to Gmail and you basically just say you want a Gmail account and you sign up, name, password, and all that. Make sure you write all this down so you can get to it. If you're a teacher in a Google domain district or school, what happens is they will give you all this information and you then when you go to your Google Classroom, it already is set up and waiting for you. I'm going to go ahead and log back in. All right. So I'm going to go to classroom.google.com. Now, again, if you've never done this before, this may look different. It may look like this, except it doesn't have all these uh, classes. As you can see, I have a lot of them. Let me see what happens if I go over here and I'm going to sign out again. Or I'm going to drive the Google crazy here before the night's over with. And now I'm going to try to go and go classroom.google.com. And as you can see, it recognizes that I have tried to sign out here. So I'm going to go in and do another account. No, I'm not going to do another account. I'm not going to fight with it because what it's trying to do is it's wanting me to actually use Google because it knows I'm a user. It wants me to use that account. It keeps wanting me to, to go into this account. So I'm going to go ahead and go back in. What I was going to say is if you come in, and you get this very large screen that talks about using all these different tools right here in the middle of the screen, about half two thirds of the way down, there's a button there that says go to classroom. And when you do that, this is what you'll see minus all these other classrooms that I've got here. So we're going to kind of do this, not bass backwards, but we're going to kind of show you um what it looks like and as you can see i've got lots of people who have shared their classrooms with me and then i'm going to take you into drive from drive we're going to do some creating now why do we do that think of google classroom as your closet or think of it as that cabinet that you have in your classroom in your physical classroom where you keep all your stuff drive becomes that space. So if I am a Google user, in other words, if I have a Gmail account, I can type drive.google.com and this is my drive. So this is all the stuff that's in my drive that I have available to me. And don't let this scare you down here because you'll have plenty of space for stuff that we're going to create. And if you're a teacher in a school district, oh my goodness, you have a lot more space than that. But Drive is where we're going to start out creating stuff. So I just wanted to make sure that you've created a classroom. And how do you do that? You go over here and you click on the plus sign and you create a class. And you have to say that I've read and understand that above notice, and I'm not using classroom at a school with students. That's fine. And you're going to click on continue. Now, as I've said, if you are a teacher in a Google classroom in a school, what I'm doing here, you're not really all that interested in because it's already made. But what we're going to talk about, I think you'll see the connections and maybe I can help you make your classroom a little bit better. Now, when you do that, again, you don't have to worry about creating section, subject, room, and all that. Just put a class name in. And if you want to make it something uh, personal, like you can see all these other students who have done this with me before, they've just called it their class. 
by their name. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to use the class that I have made when I do my trainings. And I'm going to remove a couple of things here because they are not current to what we're trying to do. There we go. So this is kind of like what it looks like. And if you go across it here, this right here is your name that you created. If you want to change it, you can change it right there. These are all the different Google classes that you can belong to. Right now, I belong to quite a few. You probably don't have any. And then here's calendar. The calendar is there, and we're going to cover calendar, but the calendar is right there at your fingertips. So if you need to go in and look at what's going on in your classroom, you can. Now, going across, this is the stream. The stream is where people see what you are doing in your classroom. This is the organizational piece of your classroom. This is where you create topics as a top level organizational tool. And then within the topics, you can put in the assignments that we will do in the classwork tool, or you can pull over stuff that you've created in Drive. So there's two ways of looking at this. There are people who use their Drive like the storage closet. And as you can see, I've got all kinds of folders down here as well as standalone files. And then they can pull things out of these folders that they then want to put over into the drive. I mean, into their classroom. Or they can pull over the entire folder. So the folders then become a repository of things that you might want to use within the topic that you're, and the topic is nothing more than, let's say, a unit that you're teaching or a part of your curriculum that you're teaching. So that topic is that, and then the ability to organize it through these folders then becomes a way for you to have everything in a nice, simple manageable space because these things can get very, very long. Okay, let me drop back into here. Classwork is where you can create things within the uh, classroom. So if you need to create something as an assignment, you can create it here. Let me show you the difference. So if you click on create, as you can see, you have something called assignment. And we're going to go through the process here in just a minute. But the assignment, once you click on it, basically is where you have the ability to decide what you want the assignment to be about. Um, and as you can see, you can decide where you want it to go. You can put amount of it. And then here's the part that's really interesting. This is where you can do the organization where your topic would be. This is where your assignment would go. And this is new. They've added this. This is the new rubric that they've added, which I frankly like a lot. Um, this is where you can actually have everything within the assignment uh, created there. They also have added this to the assignment. So within the assignment, you can have everything that you can do over in Drive, but you do it within the assignment. Now, why would you want to do one over the other? Very simple. Think again about that drive being that teacher closet, that teacher cabinet where you have everything at your disposal, and then you basically move things over into the classroom that you need. And again, if you look here, this is also new, the way they have it organized, they've got an add button. And so from the add button, I can look for things that I can then add into the assignment. So here I can go, I can go back to my Google Drive and I can find the files that I want to bring over and put into my classroom. Note, note, you don't see any of the folder structure like you saw. Now I can go and do my drive 
Oh, so there's my folder structure. And I can click on that folder and I can now add it to an assignment. Make sure you look up here because what it always does is it always goes to recent first. But you want to go to my drive. Now, the other thing that's really interesting is if you're on a team, either a department or a grade group, and you all have made decisions about things that you want to share, you can go into those and you can put those into your classwork. It's a little bit confusing at first, but I think you'll see it as we work our way through it. It makes more sense if someone kind of holds your hand and we walk through it together. People is exactly what you think it is. So what I'd like you to do, if you're creating this and you're not within a domain, if you're not within a domain, I want you to add me in to your Google Classroom. And to do that, it's just as simple as typing in my username, or excuse me, my email here at the university. And one of the interesting things about it is it can find me even though I'm not a Gmail user. I am a Gmail user, but I'm not a Gmail user uh, when I'm here at the university. So I've just invited myself. So I want you to invite me in to your classroom through your people. And then the last one you can probably guess are the grades. And so it basically says, well, you don't have any students, so you don't have any grades. Yeah, that's right. Now, one of the things that a lot of teachers kind of miss on is you can customize the look and the feel of your Google Classroom. It's very easy to do. All you have to do is when you look up here, there's a default kind of picture sitting here and you can go and select theme. Now, depending upon what you teach, the Google gives you some choices here. And it has a, just a sort of an other out here. I guess if you're teaching a cosmetology class, you've, you've got a way to put that in there. Um, or, and this is how I did mine with the Google thing up here, you can upload a photo. Now, if you're going to use a photo, um, as you can probably look here and see, it's going to want to stretch it and keep it narrow to fit into this space. So when you do it and you try it with the photo, well, let's, let's put one in here just to see so you can see what it looks like. So if I go over here and I picked my little Snoopy guy that I use, and I put it in. As you can see, it's only going to allow me to have my Snoopy guy. And I really can't get too much of in here, just sort of a peeking over the top. And if I then select that, that's what I get. Not bad. Um, you know, it's just, so what are you, what are you trying to do here with putting your own photo in? Uh, if I go back and let's see if I put my photo in. It's too small, so I can't use it. So you can see there it has to be 800 by 200 pixels. So if you're going to use your own photo, just make sure that it matches the right size. OK, I'll go ahead and leave Snoopy in here for our for us. Now, structure. So this is where we need to start thinking about what kind of structure are we going to be using in our class. Let's go back over here to Drive. And I'm just going to click out here in white space. And I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm going to call this new folder my Google Classroom. If you have a ton of folders, go ahead and give it something better than that. So you'll recognize what it is and I'm going to create it. And it highlights it for me so I know where it is. I'm going to double click on it. 
And now it's waiting for me to put, fo put files into this folder. Now, these can be files that I have already available to me. So if I have a blank quiz and I want to move it to a different location, in other words, this is stuff that either my district has given me to use in my classroom or it's stuff that um, I want to use. I can just basically tell it to move it to these different locations. I can tell it to open it with various things. But right now, all I want to do is I just moved it to my files, my new folder location. That's it. But also within the folder, I can create. And I can do that by coming up here to the new button. And I can come down here. And as you can see, I've got a lot of stuff that I can play with. A lot of stuff. Um, let's go in and start with the Google Docs so we can get familiar with that. Ignore my Grammarly here. It's a part of my Chrome and it always wants to jump in and take over. First thing you want to do is up here is you always click on where it says Untitled Document and give it a name. And let's look around now at our screen here. Now, notice, I don't know if you saw it, but it pops up and says all changes saved in Drive. So this document now is in my Drive. It knows it's in my Drive. And everything I do from here on out, it automatically saves it back to Drive. The tools that are available here are the tools that you're used to seeing. So I can go in here and I can type... just like you would in any word processor that you use. Notice it has spell check built into it. Okay, so at this point, I'm you know pretty straightforward. We know what it looks like. We know we can highlight the text. We know we can come up here and do Arial and come down and change the the font if we want to do something a little more. Um, and we can change the normal text. We can change it to these different heading options. Uh, we can change the size. We can change its bold, its italicized, its underline. We can change the color of the text. We can add a link. We can add a comment. We can add an image. We can justify it. We can do line spacing. In other words, when I hit the return key, how far apart is it going to be? We can do various lists. We can do numbered lists. We can do bulleted lists. We can do increase and decrease the, the indent when we do a tab. Um, we can clear the formatting if we don't want it to, if we just want to get rid of all the formatting on it. Uh, that very seldom is ever done. Uh, in your editing mode, you can edit the document directly. You can edit, become suggestions, viewing. You can read or print the final document. Again, most of the time you'll be in there. And then, of course, there's a thing here that hides the menu, et cetera, et cetera. Let's go across the top. So file is pretty straightforward. We can see that we can actually email straight out of our doc. And the interesting thing about that is because you, all of your students would be in your Google Classroom, emailing to them from a Google Doc is extremely simple to do. Let me give you an idea. So if I click on email, it's going to basically say, who is it going to as a PDF? So it can't be played with unless you allow it. Um, and then here, if I had a bunch of people assigned in my classroom, all of they would show up right here. I can just go down through here and click, 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 click. 
And I can send a copy to myself and here's the message. Please look at this. This is important for you to understand for our next class meeting. Bang. Simple. Again, uh, I can make this available offline. So if I'm using a Chromebook and I do not have accessibility to it um, through the Chrome being connected to the internet, I can, it can be available to me to work on when I'm not there. Version history. Uh, this is actually a part of the test. Uh, and all it basically just says is when you have a version history, you can see if you're using a document that other people are collaborating on, you can see their history of collaboration on that document, which is kind of cool. Kids take to this very easy. Rename, move again. Of course, delete it. Publish it to the web. Your, your document details, your language. So if you are writing something and you need it to be written in a language other than English, like you're sending home and, or you're sending an email to students in your class to their parents who may speak Spanish instead of uh, English, you can go down and you can change. Look at all the different all the way down into Oriental and Slavic languages, all the different languages that you have available to you so that you can send it out and it can go into someone's um, language that they can read it. So I'll go up here and I'll say, will you please change that to French? Well, I've got to highlight it first, excuse me. So I come back and I highlight it and I change the language to, let's do Espanol. Latin America. Okay. And it will change it. It didn't, but it, <laughs> it will change it to that language. And this is why I don't have the add on in here that will allow it to do the translations and here they all are so you basically would go in here and find the doc or the application that allow you to create translate thank you very much and i'm going to install that Okay, I've done that. All righty, let me close out the whole marketplace thing. Now if I go up here and look at my add-ons, And I want to translate that into Spanish. And I'm going to have it go from English to Spanish. And if I put that over here into my little box, Oops, copied something else. It will put it in for me because I've added it into my um, add-ons. That's one of the things that you have to kind of fiddle and twiddle with to make sure that it works right. Let's go back and try it again from file. Now, you know what? I'm... I'm mistaken here. This is where you can type within those different uh, languages. It's not where you do the translation. Where I showed you, this is where you can do the translation. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's do edit. Edit is exactly what you think it is. View. You can take away some of these things if it bothers you. Insert. Hmm. So if you look at inserting, one of the things that really makes it cool is you can search from the web 
and there's our old friend the Google and if I were to type in planets I can now add that just by sliding it over and putting it in to my and now I have a picture of the planets so in my little creation here I've already added some stuff and it's as simple as just doing a search and finding it and putting it in here it's that easy you can go into Google drawings you can create a new drawing and put it in I hope you're noticing that in all these uh, various inserts I'm being allowed to go into my drive which is where a lot of things can be I can create a table I can create charts so there's so much that you're allowed to put in to a Google document that's so easy to put in now here's our formatting which we kind of looked at when we were going across the, the tool lines up here but they give them to you again and then here's our tools this is where you can have spelling and grammar you can turn that on so it does it while you're working or it doesn't uh, there's your word count there's your review of suggested edits and then there's this well first of all let's do the translate document sound now that it does it and There's Spanish. Okay. And I'm going to have it translated to Spanish. And there it is. So there's my document now in translated form. And if I wanted to, file, email as an attachment, and now I can send it to a uh, parent who doesn't speak English and they can see what we're going to be studying. Here's the other one that's really cool. And let's go and select it. So one of the things that we struggle with are kids and keyboarding, kids being able to uh, type. And also there, there are some folks that have just difficulty with putting their words down. But in here, you now have the ability to use a tool that allows you to voice type. Let's see how well it works. This is, well, I gotta turn on the flash thing. This is my attempt to use the Google voice recording to put my, what I am talking about into my document. Now, as you can see, it struggled with that because it's the first time I've ever done it. The more I use this tool, the better it gets at creating um, my, what it is I'm saying. You can also put punctuation in. Let's try that again, shall we? This is my recording of a Google Doc. As you can see, you got this is my running out in Google Docs. So I need to work with this a little bit to get it to the point where it actually knows my voice. That's the only drawback to it. We kind of looked at these. Oh yeah, accessibility settings. Let's look at those. You can turn on screen reader support. So if you have someone who is in your classroom who is blind, you can turn this on. Now, what would this do? This would allow for someone who receives this document, who it's not like it's going to make the document this, but it makes it accessible to someone who has a screen reader and to someone who has on a screen magnifier. If they have those things built into their browser or into their computer, this now makes those, it supports those uses. The add-ons are really kind of interesting. Um, as you can see, the only two I have here are the translate and the doc to form. The doc to form is nothing more than 
a ability to take a document and turn it into a, to a form, which means you can turn it into a test or you can turn it into a survey. Kind of neat. Um, and you can get these ads coming down here as we just were doing. Uh, it'd be kind of fun. You know, I have never put in, let's put in this word cloud one and see what it looks like. So I'm going to install it in. I'll say it's Steve Swan again. See, delete, da, 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 da. Okay, allow. And we're done. Very nice. So if I go up to my add ons, I should now see a word cloud generator. And if I go to classic, let's see what it does. It's waiting for me to put in the words that I'm going to put into I'm doing this without ever having done it, guys. So bear with me. Let's see if I now can paste in. Now this is what I get for trying something that I haven't done before. Oh, no, look. It's picking up all the writing I have. Duh. Okay. So there's my word cloud that it's made. Now, putting it over here into, let's see what it'll let me do under advanced options. It shows me the word cloud. Isn't that cool? So it shows all the different words and how many times they were used. It's showing me the Spanish words as well. That's pretty darn neat. And it says right click to save or copy image. I will copy the image. And I'm sure now if I come over here and I do a control V or right click and paste, it'll put it into, and there it did, put it into my document. So we've gone from just a simple sentence that I put in here to all of this craziness that we now have added. Close that out. Now look what, this is where it gets really interesting. We've gone across the top, we've gone across the menu bar, but look up here. I can share this and I can share it by putting in various people's emails in here. Now, once again, let me stress that when you do this and you have a class with people already in the class, they show up here. So you can go down through here and say, I want to share this with Susie. I want to share it with John. I want to share it with Steve. I don't want to share it with Bill. Why would I do that? Why would I do that? If this was a document that I was creating for my students to use in the class, at this point, I can make some distinctions in the document that would be necessary for students to use. So I'm differentiating. So I can create a document that is set up for different groups who need different things to be able to have success in my classroom. And when I do that and I hit the done button, then it sends this document to there. When they log in, they'll see it on their Google Classroom, or I can get a shareable link. Anybody who can see this, uh, they can see what my document is. And again, down here, I can do the same thing. I can send the link to people. All right. Commenting. Commenting is a really interesting part of the Google. And what happens is, if you want to add a comment, you click on that link. It's then going to give you a place where you can put a comment in. Now, why would you do this? If you want to set this up so that it is now being shared. So, again, let's go back to that idea about I can share it to a group of students. I can then have them working together and their commenting will appear next to where the various pieces are that I have created here. 
So if I give this to a group of kids to work on, one of the things that someone might comment is, we need a better image that shows relative size. Clean up my typing here. Comment. So now, as a shared document, I can see what the other people who are working with me think about what we have created so far. I can make a shared comment about the writing here. I can make a comment about the word cloud that's located down here. You can comment just about everything and anything that's in a document. That simple. Now, where did this end up? Let's go look and see. So if I'm to my drive, and I know that everything that I've created so far, there it is. So within the folder called My Google Classroom is now a document called My Google My Classroom Doc. That's simple. Just that simple. Let's go take a look at something else we could create. I'm going to do a new, and now I'm going to create a slides. Again, a slides is nothing more than um, a presentation, PowerPoint presentation, if you need to use that lens. So I'm going to give it a title up here. And this is where we can, we can get into a discussion about that we can use these various tools as ways of introducing content to students, as ways of organizing students, as well as an assignment for students to do. So I'm in a mode right now where I'm basically a teacher and I'm creating things for my students. I can either, by coming over here, if I want to, I can play around with themes. You don't have to. Um, there's a whole world out there of people who argue about how you should be using themes. Let's just keep it simple for right now. So I'm going to do a right click, and I'm going to create a new slide. And you can see it automatically understands that this new slide is not the first slide. So. Now this is where it gets really interesting. I can come in here and I can insert all kinds of things. Look at this. I can go to video and I can put in planets. And maybe if I'm teaching a certain grade, I might want to put that in as well. And so what the YouTube does is it basically 
gives me the information I need and the, at the grade I need them at. And I'm going to select it and I'm going to put it into the slide. Just like that. I can move it around on the screen. I can make it bigger if I want to, realizing I've got to work within the boundaries of my slide. Don't want to stretch it too far because then everything is kind of, you know, pulled all out of. But now I have ability here to very easily put some information together that I'm going to use in my slide. Now, of course, can I go back up here and put an image in? Sure. Do the same trick. I can go out here and I can do a search for those same kind of images that we were just using. Create a new slide. Pull in a picture that I might want to use. And here I will have to work with it to get it to all fit. I guess this is the new order of the solar system because I don't see Pluto in here anywhere. Okay. And again, clean it up a little bit so it doesn't look so stretched. All changes saved to drive. Now, the rest of these tools across here are pretty much the tools that, that we just went through. As you can see, I've got the same kind of, I've got a slides one here so I can do it. I, I just right click on things and I can arrange how things look. There are my tools. What does Explorer allow me to do, do you think? It allows me to search your docs and the web. So again, if I'm looking for stuff, it can literally pull things in for me that I might want to use. So let's go and do another new slide. And let's do explore planets. Look at all the different things that it comes up with. So it will automatically go out and search a Google search. It can do a images search. If I have things in my drive, it can find it there. But if I have something from the web and I want to put it in here, it brings over the link and puts it in here. So I have the ability to just by Using the Explore feature, I now have ways for kids to see things. And then if I wanted to, I can go all the way out to the Google. Okay. And where is this being placed? This is in my drive. I have the same ability to uh, allow groups to work together, share. If I want this to be a template that then uh, my assignment might be to kids, go ahead and complete the template, put in the different planets, work each of you, select the planet to be responsible for, so on and so on. Of course, here's my present button right there. I can use the calendar feature over here to say, you know, this is due by such and such a date. I can do transitions if I want. I'm not a big fan of transitions in presentations, but kids sure are. <laughs> they love doing transitions. Let's go back to that drive. And there we go. Now you can see that I have two documents within a folder that I call my Google Classroom. Let's jump back to the Google Classroom.
this is where you can put in announcements for your class to all students And when you use the announcements feature, the nice thing about it is, is it allows you to give um, at first glance when kids land here, because the announcements are always on the first part of the page. They're always at the top of the page. And so when they land, they can see, well, this is what we have coming next. Now, if I click on that add button down here, and if I go to the Google Drive, And I've got that document that is basically where I've talked about um, what I want to do. Or if I have the slides about what I want to do, I can just go ahead and put that into the announcement as well. Okay. So if I go over here and I click on that and I add it, I now have put in the document that is the sort of here's what we're going to be doing in other words it's your way of organizing and having kids see what's going on in the class you can schedule these announcements or if you do a post okay you now have a way that when kids land in their your class they see the google they see whatever it is that you want them to see as a way of organizing the beginning. Now let's stay here for just a few little bit longer. And what I want to do now is show you the organizational tool. So now the organizational tool is right here, topic. So I'm going to call my topic planets. I'm going to add it. And now I have this right here in, and I can go back to my stream. And what I have here is, I, if I had something in it, which I don't yet, we're going to, it would show up over here. So over here is where I can have all my topics lined up so that I can now find it. Okay. So let's go and put something in here, shall we? And I'm going to do that by going to, and you know where I'm going. I'm going to go over here. So now I'm back in my drive, and I want to put this into a topic. So I can either move it. Or, I'm sorry. I can get a shareable link. By the way, that's one of the things that we're all mad about is because we can't just move things. We should be able to click this and say, I want to move this. Uh, over somewhere. I can't do that. It's driving us all crazy. But I can go in and get a link. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> so I've got a link now. And if I go back to my classroom, and if I look here, I need to put a post in here. So I'm going to go up here. And I'm going to create an assignment. And I'm going to add from my Google Drive either I can either do the assignment, in other words, one of these, or I can put in a link. Totally up to me how I want to organize things. See, it's the same thing. Now, up here where it says title, we'll call it intro to unit. And down here, we can have, please 
read the material. No kid does. Now, over here is where we want to look. Because right now, as you can see, we have created a, an assignment, but we have not assigned it to a topic. And that's where I can do that right there. Okay. Now, once I've done all of that sort of thing, if I come up here and I assign, I've got to apply a due date and all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to say that we'll make it due on the 17th is when we're going to start. And I've got a title. I've got all this done. Okay. Well, that's unusual. Okay. Points. Um, ungraded. Thank you very much. Now can I sign it? Well, this happens, and I'm not going to cover it up, but this does happen sometimes. It doesn't know what to do with it. Um, let me make sure I've got a topic. I know I have a topic. Close it out. Let's try it one more time, shall we? So let's create an assignment. Okay. And let's add from our Google Drive our little slides presentation that we created. And I'm going to add that. And I'm going to put it into the planet's topic. I'm going to create a rubric. Maybe that's what's kicking me out. And I'm going to call it, um, here's, let's just call it planets. I would put in all the things we're going to do, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now I'm going to save it. Ooh, see, it's it's doesn't like anything I'm doing. Mm-mm-mm. Okay. You want points? I'll give you points. Thank you. Okay, so I've got two criteria here. Now let's see if it'll let me. There you go. So what it was doing, and that's new. That's why it caught me, guys. What's new is it's forcing me to put a rubric in here. Hmm. Interesting. One of the things we have to realize about the Google Classroom is it is not set in stone. In fact, anybody who has a Google Teacher certification, one of the things that Google will allow you to do is you can send in comments to them about how to make this better. Uh, and as I said, we all have been sending in screaming to the Google about the ability to just do drag and drop from the Google Drive over into a classroom. Um, I get it. I mean, I understand what, what their point is. Now, if you go back into stream, let's look at what's happened here. We have created a welcoming announcement. It says, Steve has posted a new assignment, Intro to Planets. 
And when he goes over here, it's waiting for us to use it. There it is. In other words, it didn't have any student work. That's why it came up looking empty like that. And so I have my slides here, and it'll open it up, and it'll show it to me. And I can go through it and look at it. I can assign this as a tool, as, as something for kids to do. I can assign it as, uh, like I've done here, which is an intro. You always want to use this announcement feature to let kids know what's going to happen in the class with all of this. We're going to go back to the drive. And in the drive, let's create a Google form. And we're going to use this as a way for you to create a survey to ask your students questions about what it is that you're trying to teach. And up here, you see I click on it, it automatically grabs that. And I give it a little description. Okay. Now, once you click below it, look at the interesting things that pop up. You can do things like, can you name the planets? And when you do that, you have a choice over here of how you want them to be able to answer. So you can do multiple choice. You can do all these different kinds. Let's just leave it at paragraph. And now they can actually write in here. When I want to put another question in, I click on the plus. And I go the largest planet is, and then I can do a multiple choice. I can say Earth, Jupiter, Mars. Venus. Okay. It's required. So I have that clicked right there. So you can do some crowdsourcing very quickly and then get an idea about what kids know. I can send it to them beforehand, or because we now know what happens, this is being saved over in our wonderful Google Drive. I could put as many questions in here as I want. I can also do things like add an image. Now you're starting to, I hope, see how easy it is to do this kind of thing. I can do an upload, I can do it by an URL, I can do a Google image search. And I could do a non middle kind of image just to, so it doesn't throw kids off too much. Just so they get a nice sort of look and feel about what they're doing. put in a YouTube video. 
that same kind of YouTube video that we looked at before. Okay. And maybe this one's the planet song. Maybe I want to put that in again to make it fun. Now, where did this end up? It's over here in my drive. There it is. Um, and that should be what do you know, so we'll fix that right now. If I go back to my classroom, I have this wonderful little survey that I've created. Let me start to close on some of these. And so I know now that I can go in to where I've created this little assignment. I can edit it. And I can now add from the Google Drive. my survey. Okay. All this is just the first thing you have to think about is could I do it from here from my classroom? Sure. But if I'll take the time to actually develop things over here in the drive, then it becomes just a matter of adding things into the various assignments that I might want to create. Now, the thing that Google Forms does so well is after you have gone through and done it, and you submit it, as the teacher, I can go in now and see the responses. And it does the responses using a Google Sheets. And I can go in, I can look at that either by question, I can look at it as an individual, uh, I can look at it as a summary. As you can see, uh, we have a problem. <laughs> well, no, we don't have a problem. We did know the right answer, but we didn't know the names. All righty. Now, what I want to do is make sure that I, you understand what we're going to be doing here. You have gone in and you've created yourself your own little Google Classroom shell. And what I've asked you to think about doing tonight is creating things within your drive. And we did that by creating a folder in our drive that we called my Google Classroom. So that when I go in here, I can see that that's here. By the way, let me, let me digress just a little bit. And I'll show you what we, I'm talking about when I say we're all upset about that. You see, when you do a click on it here, I can move it to anywhere within my drive that I want to. But I, and I can share it, but I can't actually take this folder structure and put it over into my classroom. All I can do is this, get a shareable link. Okay. So when I go back into classroom, if I wanted to, and I wanted to add an assignment, I can give it a title, and I know I'm titling it the same thing. And then if I do an add down here and I do a link, and I put that link in that I just got, okay, and then I do the assignment, and I look up here and I go, okay, what do I got here? I click on it, and I click here. 
And so here are all the documents that are in that assignment folder that I have in Google. Now, let me make sure you understand something because people get very confused about this. As you can see here, this assignment is created by me, the teacher. But when a kid comes in and sees it, what they're seeing is specific to them. So if they open this, and if there's an assignment here with instructions, it is specific to them as a user. So everybody sees it, and everybody, when they go into it, it will give different user data response back. So as you can see here, if I type in no, and then if I put in Jupiter, Jupiter, it's going to respond back to me uh, in my assignments that I have put out here. Okay. I hope I'm not confusing you. What I'm trying to get you to see is that when students or when you're creating here, what you're creating, you can pull in from your drive or you can pull in individual pieces from your drive. It's up to you how you want to organize it. One of the things that I think a lot of people get very confused about is they don't take the time to organize this part. I'm in my drive. I created a folder called my Google Classroom. It now is in with all the other things that I have here in my Google Classroom. And my drive is pretty, you know, if you scroll down through it here, it's got an awful lot of stuff sitting in it. But what I've tried to do here tonight with you is I've tried to show you how to organize it in a much better way by putting in these folders within my drive that then become where I can go and pull things into my actual classroom. To review, the creation of things is done in the classwork part. This is where you can create various ways. And forgive me, I don't have any curriculum here in front of me. So I'm just creating things on the fly. So as you can see that I've created another topic here called the sun. And um, by the way, my education, this is something I created today. So I'm going to get rid of it so it doesn't fuse you all. Okay. So now I have these topics here. One of the things that we asked uh, the Goog to be able to do is we did ask them to the ability to move things up. So if I wanted to organize this, it always puts the, the last thing you did first. But if I want to organize it so it matches up with my curriculum, all I got to do is come over here to my um, three dots. And I can move these things around. Notice I have, it shows me my um, wonderful little announcement as well. But then when I look out into the stream, it shows me the focus that I'm doing. It does not show me my topic. Why is that? Why doesn't it show me my topic? You know now. There's nothing in it. So why should it show it? Okay. So one of the things you have to do is you can't go in and just create, create, create. You have to put stuff in, placeholders, if you will. So make sure that you're aware of that. So when I'm in here, I've got a sun here, but if I don't put something in my sun topic, see, I have to actually add something in here before it takes effect. So I can go back to classwork, create an assignment or material. Now I can do a material as well. And as you see, nothing really changes here. I can go down here and I'll just grab something I've already created over here in the Google Drive. Oh, 
let's just grab that for right now and we'll add that and I'll post it so now I have something up here called fun and when I open that there's something in here as well so if you're going to create things that you just want kids to have access to in other words they're like uh, supplemental folders or they're like information that might be needed in the class you can create something called material and you can put into the material the things that kids need to have now notice it comes up as a topic but it doesn't come up with anything in it yet because there's no assignments assignments are the the soul of topics and when I come down here and look at my planets, I have an assignment there. This one I don't because I don't have anything in it. This material is just here as a way to have a place we can say to kids, go look here if you need help. See right here? So I could have named this instead of just sun. Things. Things we will use in our study of the planets. Okay. And then I can come down here and I can just start throwing more and more stuff in here because you know that everything that I need to get to is right here. I can even go out and find that planet video again and put it in here. Add that in here. And I could put all this in here. And then when I save it, it shows up here in my materials folder. Okay. And as you can see, if I want that to be the first thing, I can do that. If I need to move it, the one thing that we're screaming at them to do is to be able just to grab things and move. So far, they haven't listened to us about that. Um, but if I don't want it sitting here at the top, although it might be a good idea to put it up here at the top, and that way you can say everything you need to find is right up here in the materials folder. And then I can have my assignments here and more assignments down here. And then when I come over here, this is where I can have my topics so that I have an idea about what I'm doing. Okay. Let me go ahead and jump back into the actual level. I kind of did a little bit of sheets, but we'll come back to sheets next week and I'll pick it back up and show you the power of sheets. What I need to do next week also is I need to show you how when you create things, um, you can send them out so that your principal or other teachers can see them to use. Tonight, all we did is we saw where apps live. We saw what our Google Drive was. We did a fairly good dive into documents. Um, and slides, although slides is over here, we'll just say that we did slides as well. And then we've looked at how we can integrate all of this. Next week, we'll come back and we'll make sure we go back over it again. And I'm going to make sure then that you see the calendar. The calendar is really where you start taking off in how you can assign these things. Remember, the drive is your starting point. Your classroom is where things end up that are started over here in your drive. Assignments is where you basically build the things that you want your kids to do. Um, and you do that through the use of topics. Although one topic could have 14 assignments in it. One topic could have just one assignment in it. It's up to you how you want to do that. Um, and then we'll just next week we'll do 
this Google Calendar a lot so that you can understand its purpose and its power. Okay. Wow. I normally do this in, in uh, three hours. <laughs> so if you felt rushed, yep, we were rushed. I hope you've got a grounding here. Um, remember that when you go into these levels, uh, there is plenty of stuff in here for you to use to understand what we're doing. So when you go in here, if you want to look at this, here's a tutorial. It's a really good tutorial. Here's a guide. And this is a really good guide that will walk you through everything we just did tonight. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about this here down here where you the steps to become a Google certified teacher. Okay. I hope that wasn't uh, too crazy. Let's ask our one person who comes in here every week and suffers through all this. Stephen, did we, do we, were we clear? Did you help understand? Uh, yes, sir. I did have one question about the calendars. Um, is the classroom calendar going to be a separate entity from the Google calendar? And I'm sure they sync somehow, but they're two separate entities or, or what, how's that work? I guess you'll probably talk about that. That's an excellent question. So the Google calendar, the Google calendar that you and I would use as consumers, in other words, we have a Gmail account and in that Gmail account, we have a calendar that is separate from the calendar that is created for your Google Classroom. And you can understand why, because you don't want to be sharing the sort of things you would do in your consumer Google Calendar um, with your Google Calendar that's in your classroom. The Google Calendar in your classroom is used when you want to have information available to students about, hey, we're going to take a test next Friday, or if you want uh, parents to have information about. One of the things I didn't spend a lot of time on is that in some Google domains, in some Google schools, they give parents access to their students' Google stuff so they can see it. And so teachers will take advantage of that and put things into the Google Calendar that a parent can see. Uh, so I hope I answered it. Google Calendar consumer one attached to your Google Gmail consumer is separated from the Google Calendar that lives within your Google Classroom. Let me show you. So if you'll notice up here, it says Google Calendar, front and center. And when I click on that, it pops up. And in nowhere, even though I'm Steve Swan, and I can have things with in here that would represent Steve Swan in his uh, Gmail account, it doesn't show up in here because this is my Google Classroom calendar. And if you look here, this thing right here, meet with principal, that's something that we created in my training. So I really need to get rid of that. Um, there. Okay. So that's what, the, and you can see down here, all these different calendars that I've created over the uh, time that I've been teaching this to people. Did that answer your question? Yes, sir. It sure did. Okay. All right. So in other words, bottom line, you don't need to worry about someone seeing something in your Google Calendar, in your Google Calendar, in your classroom that would be personal unless you do it, which you're not going to do. All righty. Uh, we'll hit all that next week. And I hope that if this is overwhelming to you, if I didn't do a good job of making it clear, you'll drop me a text at 502-457-2937. You're essentially building a shell. Don't worry about putting assignments in yet. We're not going to get to that. All I wanted to do was to kind of give you a feeling around what the Google is like. Uh, so at this point, actually creating things that are going to be graded and looked at. You're not doing that yet. We'll be doing that when we get to module four. We actually create content that we will be using other outside uh, tools to create the content that we then will put into our Google Classroom. I think one of the biggest changes that has really come about, and you could see that when we were playing here in the Google, the only things that we have access to through the Google are YouTube, 
Google searches. But we don't have access to a lot of stuff out there that we can employ into our Google Classroom. Um, and that we will take a look at things like Buncee, Nearpod, Quizzes, <laughs> and um, I had one more, Abitable. Uh, we haven't looked at any of those, but we will. And that's where you're going to be asked to create something and put it into a Google Classroom structure. Okay? So what all you did tonight, you'll probably end up, unless you can follow through with it through everything else we do, you'll end up doing what I was doing a lot. Whereas when I was looking at things that are in here and I'm going, well, I'm not going to be using that again. I was coming over here to my dots, and you can see I can delete things out. In fact, I'll delete out the sun topic because I'm not going to use it. Okay. All righty. I'll see everybody next Thursday. Uh, and as always, if you really want to, if you're really having problems and you need to get together with me, we can do a collaborative with just you and me where we can go over anything in class is sort of a virtual office visit. And I hope that if you need to have that, you'll take advantage of it. Just drop me a line at 502-457-2937 and let me know what I need to help you with. Talk to you all next week. Thank you, Stephen, for being here. I always appreciate you being here. Thank you. Have a good one. Uh-huh.